Hi friends, today we are going to see a new topic about our Indian leader APJ Abdul Kalam. APJ Abdul Kalam dated 15th October 1931 to 27th July 2015 was an Indian aerospace scientist and a stateman who served as the 11th president of India from 2007 to 2002 to 2007. He was born and raised in Rameshwaram, Tamil Nadu and studied physics and aerospace engineering. He spent the next four decades as a scientist and the science administrator mainly at the Defense Research and Development Organization that is DRDO and the Indian Space Research Organization as ISRO and was initially involved in Indian civilian space program and military missile development efforts. He thus came to be known as the Missile Man of India for his work on the development of ballistic missiles and launch vehicle technology. He also played a pivotal organizational, technical and the political role in India's Porkaram to the nuclear test in 1998. The first since the original nuclear test by India in 1974. Kalam was elected as the 11th president of India in 2002 with the support of both ruling Bharti Janta Party and then the opposite Indian National Congress, widely referred to as the People's President. He returned his civilian life of education, writing and public service after a single term. He was a recipient of the several prestigious award including the Bharat Ratna, India's highest civilian honor. While delivering a lecture at the Indian Institute of Management Shillong, Kalam collapsed and died from man apparent cardiac arrest on 27 July 2015, aged 83. Thousands, including national level disintegrities, attended the funeral ceremony held in his hometown of Rameshwaram, where he was buried with full state honors. Early Life and Education Abdul Kalam was born on 15th October 1931 to a Tamil Muslim family in the pilgrimage centers of Rameshwaram on the Pamban Island, then in the Madras Presidency and now in the state of Tamil Nadu. His father, Jayaluddin, was a boat owner and imam of a local mosque. His mother, Ashima, was a housewife. His father owned a ferry that took the Hindus pilgrims back and forth between the Rameshwaram and now uninhabited the Tanishkodi. Kalam was the youngest of the four brothers and one sister in his family. His ancestors has been wealthy Marakaya traders and landowners with the numerous properties and a large tract of land. Marakayas are a Muslim ethnic groups found in the coastal Tamil Nadu and Sri Lanka who claim the descent from the Arab trades and the local women. The family business have been involved in trading groceries between the mainland and the island and to and fro from the Sri Lanka. As well as as a ferrying pilgrim between the mainland and the Pamban. With the opening of the Pamban Bridge to the mainland in 1914, however, the business failed and the family fortune and the properties were lost by 1920s, apart from the ancestral house. The family was poverty striking by the time Abdul Kalam was born. As a young boy, he had to sell the newspaper to add the family's major income. In his school years, Kalam had an average grades that was described as a bright and a hardworking student who had a good desire to learn. He spent hours on his studies, especially in mathematics. After completing his education at 
Squas High Secondary School, Ramanadapuram. Kalam went to on to attend St. Joseph's College, Tirchrapalli. Then applied with the University of Madras. From that, he graduated in physics in 1954. He moved to Madras in 1955 to study aerospace engineering in the Madras Institute of Technology. While Kalam was working on a senior class project, the dean was dissatisfied with his lack of progress and threatened to revoke his scholarship unless the project was finished within the next three days. Kalam met the deadline impressed, impressing the dean who later said to him, I was putting you under a stress and asked you to meet a difficult deadline. He narrowly missed achieving his dream of becoming a fighter pilot as he placed ninth in the qualifier and only eight positions were available in IAF. Career as a scientist. After graduating from the Madras University of Technology in 1960s, Kalam joined Aeronautical Development Establishment of Defense Research and the Development Organization by the Press Information Bureau of the Government of India. As a scientist, after becoming a member of the Defense Research and Development Services DRDS, he started his career by designing a small hovercraft but remained unconvenienced by his choice of a job at DR Depot. Kalam joined the INCOS part working under Vikram Sarabal, the re-owned space scientist. He was interviewed and recruited into ISRO by HSG Murthy, the first director of the Thumba Equatorial Rocket Launching Station TERLS. In 1969, Kalam was transferred to Indian Space Research Organization, that is ISRO, where he was the first project directors of the India's first satellite launch vehicle, SLV-3. It is successfully developed the Rohin satellite in near the Earth orbit in July 1980s. Kalam had the first started work on an expandable rocket project independently at DRDO in 1965. In 1969, Kalam received the government's approval and expanded the program to endure more engineers. In 1963 to 1964, he visited NASA's Lagency Research Center in Hampton, Virginia, Goddard's Space Flight Center in Maryland, and the Valo Flight Facility. Between the 1970s and 1990s, Kalam made an effort to develop the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, PSLV, and SLV-3 projects, both of which proved to be successful. Kalam was invented by Raja Ramana to the witness the country's first nuclear test, Smiling Buddha, as the representative of TBRL. Even though he had not participated in this development, in the 1970s, Kalam also directed two projects, Project Devil and Project Valiant, which sought to be develop the ballistic missiles from the technology of successfully SLV program. Despite the disapproval of the Union Cabinet, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi allocated the secret fund for this aerospace project through her dis criminatory power under Kalam's directorship. Kalam played an integral role convincing the union cabinet to conceal the true nature of this classified aerospace project. His research and educational leadership brought him a great laurel and prestige in 1980s, which promoted the government to initiate an advanced mission program under his directorship. Kalam and Dr. V.S. Arunachalam, 
the metallurgist and the scientific advisor to the defense minister work on the suggestion by then the defense minister at venkatraman on a proposal for simultaneous development of a cure of missile instead of taking the planned missiles one after the another r venkatraman was instrumental in getting the cabinet approval for allocating 3.88 billion us dollar rupees for the mission named integrated guided missile development program igmdp and appointed kalam as the chief executive kalam played a vital part in developing of many missiles under the mission including agni an intermediate range ballistic missile and the pratik the tactful surface to surface missile although the project have been criti criticized for mismanagement and cost and the time overruns kalam served as the chief scientist advisor to the prime minister and the secretary of the defense research and development organization from the july 1992 to december 1999 the pokaram to the nuclear test was conducted during this period in which he played an intensive political and technological role kalam served as the chief project coordinator along with rajagopala chidambaram during the testing phase media coverage of kalam during this period made his country's best known nuclear scientist however the directors of the site test k santanam said that the thermo nuclear bomb had been a fissile and criticized kalam for issuing an incorrect report both kalam and chidambaram dismissed the claims in 1998 along with the cardiologist somu raju kalam developed a low cost coronary stent named the kalam's raju stent in 2012 the dio designed a raga tablet computer for the health care in rural area which was named as kalam raju tablet presidency kalam served as the 11th president of india succeeding k r narayanan he won the 2002 president election with an electoral vote of 922884 surpassing the 1 07366 votes owned by lakshmi shahal his term instituted from 25th july 2002 to 25th july 2007 on 10th june 2002 the national democratic alliance that is nda which was in the power at that time expressed that they would nominate kalam for the post of president and both the samajwadi party and the national congress party backed his candidacy after the samajwadi party announced its support for kalam narayanan chose not to seek a second term in office leaving the field clear kalam said of the announcement of his candidature i am really overwhelmed everywhere both in the internet and in other media i have been asked for a message i was thinking what message i can give to the people the country at this juncture on 18th june kalam filed his nomination papers in the indian parliament accompanied by vajpay and his senior cabinet colleagues the polling for the president's election begins on 15th july 20, 2002 in the parliament and the state assemblies with the media claiming that the election was one sided affairs and kalam's victory was forgenic conclusion the count was held on 18th july kalam became the 11th president of republic of india in an easy victory and moved into rashtrapati bhavan after he was sworn on 25th july 
Kalam was the third president of India to have been honored with Bharat Ratna, the Indian highest civilian honor. Before becoming the president of Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan in 1954 and the Zahir Uzain in 1963 were the earlier recipients of the Bharat Ratna who later became the president of India. He was also the first scientist and the first bachelor to occupy Rashtrapati Bhavan. During his term as a president, he was affectionately known as the People's President, saying that signing the Office of the Prophet Bills was the toughest decision he had taken during his tenure. Kalam was criticized for his inaction in the decision, the fate of 20 out of 21 Mercury petition submitted to him during his tender tenure. Article 72 of the Constitution of India empowers the President of India to grant a pardon and suspend or commute the death sentences of convict on death row. Kalam acted on only one mercy plea in his five years tenure as president, rejecting the appeal of the rapist Chatterjee who was later hanged. Perhaps the most notable plea was from Afsal Guru, a Kashmiri terrorist who was convicted of the conspiracy in the December 2001 attack on the Indian Parliament and was sentenced to death by the Supreme Court of India in 2004. While the sentence was scheduled to be carried out on 20th October 2006, the pending action on his mercy pleas resulted in him meaning remaining on the death row. He also took the controversial decision to impose the president rule in Bihar in 2005. In September 2003, in an interactive session in PGI Chandigarh, Kalam supported the needs of a uniform civil code in India. Keeping in a view the population of the country, at the end of his term on 20th July 2007, Kalam expressed his willingness to consider a second term in the office provided there was certainly about his victor in the 2007 president election. However, two later days, he decided not to be contest the president election again, stating that he wanted to avoid involving the Rashtrapati Bhavan from any political processes. He was proposed by the third front named United Nation Progressive Alliance's leader J. Jalalita and coordinate the Chandrababu Naidu, the other leaders, Mulayam Singh Yadav and Om Prakash Chatullah, but he did not have the support of the left parties, Shiv Shena and UPA constituents, to receive a renewed mandate. Nearing the expiry of the terms of the 12th president, Pratiba Patel on 24th July 2012, media reports in April claimed that Kalam was likely to be nominated for his second term. After the report, the social network sites witnessed a number of the people supporting his candidature. The BJP political backed his nomination, saying that the party would lend their support if the Triaminal Congress, Samajwadi Party and the Indian National Congress proposed him for the 2012 presidential election. A month ahead of the election, Malayam Singh Yadav and Mamta Banerjee also expressed their support for Kalam. Days afterwards, Malayam Singh Yadav backed out, leaving Mamta Banerjee as a solitary supporter. On the 18th of June 2012, Kalam declined to the contest the 2012 presidential poll. He said of his decision not to do so. Many, many citizens have also expressed the same wish. It's only reflect their love and affection for me and the inspiration of the people. I am really overwhelmed by this support. This being their wish, I respect it. 
I want to thank them for the trust they have in me. Post Presidency After leaving the office, Kalam became a visiting professor at the Indian Institute of Management, Shillong, the, in the Indian Institute of Management, Ahadam Ahmedabad, and the Indian Institute of Management, Indore, and a honorary fellow of Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, the challengers of the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, Trivandrum, Professor of Aerospace Engineers at Anna University, and an adjunct at many other academic and research institutes across India. He taught information technology at the International Institute of Information Technology, Hyderabad, and technology at Banaras Hindu University and Anna University. In 2011, Kalam was criticized by the civil groups over his stance on the Kodambulam nuclear power plant. He supported the establishment of the nuclear power plant and was accused of not speaking with the local people. The protesters were hostile to his visit as they saw him as a pro-nuclear scientist and were unimpressed by the accentures he provided regarding the safety features of the plant. In May 2012, Kalam launched a program for the youth of India called What Can I Give Movement with the central theme of defeating corruptions. The death. On 27th July 2015, Kalam traveled to Shillong to deliver a lecture on creating a livable planet Earth at the Indian Institute of Management, Shillong. While climbing a flight of stairs, he experienced some discomfort, but was able to enter the auditorium after a brief rest. At around 6.35 p.m. IST, only five minutes into his lecture, he collapsed. He was rushed to the nearby Batani Hospital in a critical condition. Upon the arrival, he lacked a pulse or any other sign of the life. Despite being placed in the intensive care unit, Kalam was confirmed death of a sudden cardiac attack arrest at 7.45 p.m. IST. His last word to his ADA surgeon Paul Singh were reportedly funny guy or you doing well. Following his death, Kalam's body was airlifted in an Indian Air Force helicopter from Shillong to Guwahati, from where it was flown to New Delhi on the morning of 28th July in an Air Force C-130J Hercules. The flight landed at Pamban Air Base. That afternoon was received by the President, the Vice President, the Prime Minister, the Chief Minister of Delhi, Arvind Gejarwal, and the three service chief of the Indian Armed Force, who laid the birth on Kalam's body. His body was then placed on a gun carrier draft with the Indian flag and taken to his Delhi residence at 10 Rajaji Mark. There, the public and the numerous dig dignitaries paid the homage, including the former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, Congress President Sonia Gandhi and the Vice President Rahul Gandhi and the Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav. On the morning 29th July, Kalam's body wrapped in the Indian flag was taken to Pamban Airline Base and flown to Madurai in Air Force C-130J aircraft. Arriving at the Madurai airport that afternoon, his body was received at the airport by three service chief and national state disintegrities, including the cabinet minister Manohar Parikar, Vengadesh Naidu, Pun Radhakrishnan, the governments, governors of Tamil Nadu and Meghalaya, K. Rosaya and V. Shanmuganathan. After a brief ceremony, Kalam's body was flown from Air Force helicopter to the town of 
Mandapam. From where it was taken in an RV truck to his hometown of Rameshwaram. Upon arriving at Rameshwaram, his body was displayed in an open area in a front of the local bus station to uh, the public to pay their final respect at 8 p.m. that evening. On 30th July 2015, the for former president was laid to rest at Rameshwaram Pe Karumbu ground with a full state honors. Over 350,000 people attended the last rites, including the Prime Minister, the Government of Tamil Nadu, and the Chief Minister of Karnataka, Kerala, and Andhra Pradesh. Reactions India reacted to Kalam's death with an outpouring of grief. Numerous tributes were paid to the former president across the nation and on social media. The government of India declared a seven-day state mourning period as a mark of respect. President Pranab Mukherjee, the vice president Hamid Ansari, the home minister Rajnath Singh and the other leaders condoled the former president demands. The Prime Minister Narendra Modi said Kalam's death is a great loss to the scientific community. He took India to a great height. He showed the way former Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh, who had served as a Prime Minister under Kalam, said our country has lost a great human being who made the phenomenal contribution to the promotion of the self Realize in defense technology. I worked very closely with Dr. Kalam as a Prime Minister and I greatly benefited from his advice as a President of our country. A.S. Kiran Kumar called his former colleague a great personality and a gentleman, while the former chairman G. Madhavan Naya described Kalam as a global leader for whom the down prone and the poor people were his priority. He always had a patience to convey what is this, what is in his mind to the young generation. Adding that his death left a vacuum which none could fill. South Asian leader expressed the condolence and lauded the last statement. The Bhutanese government ordered the country's flag to fly at half staff to mourn Kalam's death and lit thousand butter lamp in the homage. Bhutanese Prime Minister Trishin Tobage expressed the deep sadness, saying Kalam was the leader greatly admired by all the people, especially the youth of India, who have referred to him as the people's president. Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hazina described Kalams as a rare combination of a great statement, a client, scientist and a source of inspiration to the young generation of South Asia and turned his death an irrepeatable loss to India and beyond. Bangladesh National Party Chief Kalija Zaya said as a nuclear scientist, he engaged himself in the welfare of the people. Ashraf Kani, the president of Afghanistan, called Kalam an inspirational figure to millions of people. Nothing that we have a lot to learn from his life. Nepalese Prime Minister Sushil Koyara recalled Kalam's scientific contribution to India. Nepal has lot a good friend and I have a lot lost and honored and ideal personality. The president of Pakistan, Hussein and the president of Pakistan, Nawab Shari, also expressed their grief and condolence on his death. The president of Sri Lanka, Maitripala, also expressed his condolence. Dr. Kalam was a man of a freak from conviction and indomitable spirit and I saw him as an outstanding statement of the world. His death is an irrepeatable 
laws not only to India but to the entire world. Maldivian President Abdullah Yaman and the Vice President Ahmed Adib concluded Kalam's death with Yamin naming him as a close friend of Maldives who would continue to be an inspiration to the Indians and the generations of South Asians. Former President Mion Abdul Gayom, who had made an official visit to India during Kalam's presidency, termed his demise as a great loss to all the humankind. The commander from the chief of Myanmar Armed Force, Senior General Min Ong Klao, expressed the consolence on behalf of the Myanmar government. The Dalai Lama expressed his sadness and offered a condolence and prayer, calling Abdul death an irrepeatable loss. Katim Wayne and the Prime Minister of Ontario, which Kalam has visited on numerous occasions, expressed the deepest condolence. As a respect the scientist, he played a critical role in the development of Indian space program. As a committed educator, he inspired millions of the young people to achieve his very best. And as a devoted leader, he gained support both at the home and abroad. Becoming known as the People President, I John R. Indo-Canadian families, friends and the neighbors in the Mori, the passing of his respected leaders. United States President of Barack Obama extended the deepest condolence to the people of India on the passing of the former Indian President Dr. A.B.J. Abdul Kalam and highlighted his achievements as a scientist and as a statesman. Notably, his role is strengthening U.S. Indian relations and increasing space co operation between the two nations. Suitably named the People's President, Dr. Kalam's humility and dedication to the public service served as an inspiration to the millions of Indian ad admirers around the world. Russian President Vladimir Putin expressed sincere condolence and conveyed his sympathy and support to the nearer and dearer one of the decayed leader to the government and the entire people of India. He remarked on Kalam's outstanding personal contribution to the social, economical, scientific and technical programs of India and in ensuring its national security. Adding that the Kalam would be remembered as a constituent exponent of a closer friendly relationship between our nation who has done a lot for cementing mutually beneficial Russian-Indian co cooperation. Other international leaders including former Indonesian President Susilo, Malaysian President Nijab Razak, and Singaporean Prime Minister Lee Long, President of United Arab Emirates, Sheikh Khalifa, and the Vice President and the Prime Minister of United Arab Emirates, Emir of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Allah, also paid tribute to Kalam. In a great and a special gesture, Security Generals of United Nations Bank Kimu visited the permanent mission of India to the UN and signed a condolence book. The outpouring of the grief around the world is a testament to the respect and inspiration he had garnered during and after his presidency. The UN joined the people of India in sending our deepest condolence for his great statements. May he rest in a peace and eternity, Ban wrote in his message. Memorial Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam National Memorial was built in the memory of Kalam by the DRDO in the Peg 
Karumbu in the island town of Rameshwaram, Tamil Nadu. It was inaugurated by the Prime Minister Narendra Modi in July 2017 on display or the replicas of the rockets and the missiles which Kalam had worked with. Acrylic painting about his life are also displayed along with the hundreds of the portraits depicting the life of the mass leader. There is a salute statue of a Kalam in the entrance showing him playing the Veena. There are two other smaller statues of the leader in sitting and standing posture. Personal life. Kalam was the youngest of the five siblings, the eldest of whom was a sister, Azim Zora, 1997, followed by the three elder brother, Muhammad Muttu Mira Lebai Marakaya, 5th November 1916 to 7th March 2021, Mustafa Kalam, 1999, and Qasim Muhammad, 1995. He was extremely close to his elder siblings and their extended families throughout his life and would regularly send a small sum of amount or money to his older relations, relations himself remaining a lifelong bachelor. Kalambar was noted for his integrity and his simple lifestyle. He never owned a television and was in a habit of raising at 6.30 or 7 a.m. and sleeping by 12 a.m. His few personal possessions included his book, his veena, some articles of clothing, a CD player and a laptop at his death. He left no will and his possessions went to his eldest brother who survived him. Religious and Spiritual View Religious and spiritual view were very important to Kalams throughout his life. He made his own spiritual journey the book of his final book, My Spiritual Experiences with the Puram Swamiji. Islam, a proud and participating Sunni Muslim, daily namaz and fasting during Ramadan were integral to Kalam's life. His father, the Imam of a mosque in his house, hometown of Rameshwaram, had a strictly instilled these Islamic customs in his children. His father had also impressed upon the young Kalam's the value of interfaith, respect and dialogue. As a Kalam recalled every evening, my father A.P. Jalaluddin and Iman Pakshi Lakshmana Sastri, the head priest of Ramanada Buraswami Hindu temple and a church priest used to sit with a hot tea and discuss the issue concerning the island. Such ALO exposures convinced Kalam that the answer to India's multitudinous issues lay in a dialogue and cooperation among the country's religious, social and the political leaders. Moreover, since Kalam believed that respect for the other faith was one on the key cornerstone of Islam, he was found on saying, for great men, religion is a way of making friends. Small people make religions a fighting tool. So one of the components of the Kalam's widespread popularity among diverse groups in India and enduring the aspects of his legacy is the syncretism. He embodied in appreciating the various elements of many spiritual and cultural traditions of India. In addition to his faith in the Quran and the Islamic parties practice, Kalam was a well versed in a Hindu tradition. He learned Sanskrit, read the Bhagavad Gita and he was a vegetarian. Kalam also enjoys writing Tamil poetry, playing the Veena, an Indian string instrument. 
and listening to the Carnatic devotional music every day. In 2002, in one of his yearly speech to the parliament after becoming the president, he re-irritated his desires for a more united India, stating that during the last one year, I met a number of spiritual leaders of all religion. And I would like to endeavor to the work from bringing about the unity of minds among the divergent traditional of our country. Describing the Kalam as a unifier of the minds among the divergent traditional of our country. Describing the Kalam as an unifier of the desired traditional Congress leader Shashi Tatur stated, Kalam was a complete Indian and embodiment of the elasticism of India, heritage of diversity. BJP leaders L.K. Advani concerned that Kalam was the best example of the idea of India, one who embodied the best of all cultural and spiritual traditions that signify India uniting in immense diversity. This was most strikingly evident in the school to last book he published, precisely titles as My Spiritual Experience with the Pramukh Swami. Pramukh Swami as Guru. Kalam desired to meet a spiritual leader to help create a more prosperous spiritual and unified India was what initially led him to meet the Pramukh Swami, the Hindu Guru of the Babs Swami Narayana Sampardeya, who Kalam would come to consider his ultimate spiritual teacher and guru. The first of the eight meetings between the Kalam and Pramukh Swami over a 14 years period took place on 30th June 2001 in New Delhi during which the Kalam described being immediately drawn to Pramukh Swami simplicity and spiritual purity. Kalam stated that he was inspired by the Swami throughout his numerous interactions. On such incidents occurred the day following the terrorist attack on BAPS Gandhinagar complex in September 2002. Pramukh Swami prayed for and sprinkled the holy water upon the sites of all the deceased, including the terrorists, demonstrating the view that all human is scared. Kalam recalled being moved by Pramukh Swami's evanimity and compassion, citing this incident as one of his motivation for writing my spiritual experience with Pramukh Swamiji. Summarizing the effort effect that the Pramukh Swami had on him, Kalam stated that Pramukh Swami had indeed transformed me. He is an ultimate stage of spiritual accent in my life. Pramukh Swamiji had put me in the God syndromous orbit. No maneuvers or required any more. As I am placed in my final position in eternity following Kalam's death a month after his final book was released. Co-author Arun Divari pointed to this passage as potentially probatic and premonitory of Kalam's death. Writing In his book India 2020, Kalam strongly advocated an action plan to develop India into a knowledge superpower and a developing nation by 2020. He regarded his work on India's nuclear weapon program as a way to assert India's place as a future superpower. I have identified five areas where India has a 
core competence for the integrated action first agriculture and food processing second education and health care third information and communication technology fourth infrastructure reliable and quality electric power surface transport and infrastructures for all the parts of the country fifth the self reliance in the critical technologies these five areas are closely interrelated and if the advance in a coordinated way will lead to the food economic and the national security kalam describes a transformative moment in his life when he asked pramu swami the guru of the paps swami narayana sampurvadaya how the india might realize the this five pranak wishes of development the swami answered to add a sixth area developing faith in god and spiritually to overcome the current climate of the crime and corruption became the spiritual vision for the next 15 years of kalam's life which he described in his final book my spiritual experience with pramukh swami ji published just a month before his death it was reported that there was a considerable demand in south korea for translated version of books authorized by him kalam took an active interest in other development in the field of science and technology including a research program for developing a biomedical implants he also supports open source technology over a priority software predicting that the use of free software on a large scale would bring the benefits of the information technology to the more people kalam set a target of interacting with 1 lakh students during the 2 years after his resignation from the post of scientist advisor in 1999 he explained i feel comfortable in the company of the young people particularly the high school students henceforth i intend to share with them the experiences helping them to initiate their imaginations and preparing them for the work for a developed india for which the road map is already available his dream is to let every student to light up the sky with the victory using their lantern fire in the heart awards and honors kalam received seven honorary decorations from 40 universities the government of india honored him with Bhatna Pushan in 1981 and Bhatna Vibhushan in 1990 for his work with ISRO and DRDO and his role as a scientific advisor to the government in 1997 Kalam received the India's highest civilian honor the Bharat Ratna for his contribution to the scientific research and modernization of the defense technology in India In 2013 he was the recipient of Own Barun award from the National Space Society to recognize an excellence in the management and the leadership of a space related project. In 2012 Kalam was ranked number 2 in Outlook Indian pool of greatest Indian. Following his death Kalam received a numerous tributes Tamil Nadu state government announced his birthday 15th October would be observed across the state of youth resonance day the state government further instituted the Dr ABC Abdul Kalam award consisting an 8 gram gold medal a certificate of phyla the award will be awarded annually on the independence day beginning in 2015 to resident of the state with achieving in promoting the scientific growth the humanities or the welfare of students on the anniversary of the kalam's birth in 2015 the cbsc sets a topic on his name in cbsc expression series 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi ceremonially released the postage stamp of Kalams at DRDO Bhavan in New Delhi on 15th October 2015, the 84th anniversary of Kalams' birthday. Researchers at NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory JPL has discovered a new bacterium on the filters of the International Space Station ISS and named it Soli Bacillus Kalami to honor the late President Dr. A.B.J. Abdul Kalam. Several education and the scientific institution and the other locations were renamed or named in honor of Kalams following his death. Kerala Technology University headquarters at Trivanandrapuram, where Kalam lived for the years, was renamed to APJ Abdul Kalam Technological University after his death. An agricultural college at Krishna Gange, Bihar, was renamed the Dr. Kalam's Agriculture College, Kishanjang, by the Bihar state government on the day of Kalam's funeral. The state government also announced it would name a proposed science city for Kalam. India's first medical tech institution named as Kalam Institute of Health Technology located at Vishagapatinam. Uttar Pradesh, the Technical University UPTU was renamed by APJ Abdul Kalam Technology University by the Uttar Pradesh state government. APJ Abdul Kalam's Memorial Travancore Institute of Digestive Disease and the New Research Institute in Kalam University, Kerala attached to Travancore Medical College Hospital. A new academic complex at Mahatma Gandhi University in Kerala. Constructions of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Science City started in Patna in February 2019. A new science center and a planetarium in Lost Pit, Puducherry. India and the US have launched the Fulbright Kalams Climate Fellowship in September 2014. The first call for the applicant was announced on Friday, 12th March 2016, for the fellowship, who will enable up to six India PhD students and postdoctoral research to work with US cost institutions for a period of 6 to 12 months. The fellowship will be operated by the Binational U.S. Indra Educational Foundation that is USIEF under the Fulbright program. Island Wheeler's Island, a national missile test sites in Indonesia was renamed Abdul Kalam Island in September 2015. Road. A prominent road in New Delhi was renamed from Aurangzeb Road to Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Road in August 2015. The Planet Species In February 2018, scientists from the Botanical Survey of India named a newly found plant species of Kalami in his honor. Other awards and recognitions and honors. 2014 Ordinary Professor at Beijing University, China. 2014 Doctor of Science in Edinburgh University, UK. In 2013 won Bronze Award at National Space Society. In 2012 the Doctor of Laws in Simon France University. In 2011, IEEE Honor Membership at IEEE. 2010, Doctor of Engineering at University of Waterloo. In 2009, the Honorary Decord at Oakland University. 2009, Hoover Medical at ASME Foundation USA. 2009, International Von Kerman Wings Award at California Institute of Technology, USA. 2008, Doctor of Science at University Ne Saints, Malaysia. 2008, the Doctor of Engineering, the Honoris Causa at Nike Technologies, University, Singapore. 
2008 in the Doctor of Science at Aligra Muslim University, Aligra. 2009 the Honorary Doctorate of Science and Technology at Carnegie Mellon University. 2007 King Charles II Medal at Royal Society UK. 2007 Honorary Doctorate of the Science at University of Wolverhampton UK. In 2000 Ramanujam Award at Alvars Research Center Chennai. In 1998 Veer Savarkar Award at Government of India. 1997 Indira Gandhi Award for the National Integration at Indian National Congress. 1997 Bharat Ratna at the President of India. 1995 Honorary Fellow at National Academy of Medical Sciences. 1994 Dis Dis Distinguished Fellow at Institute of Directors in India. 1990s Patna Vibhushan in Government of India. 1981 Patna Vibhushan by Government of India. Thank you.